Hey guys, are y'all ready for some good news? Are you ready for some good news? Good morning, what is up Church at Lake Forest? I'm so excited to get to join you for our weekly worship and live stream this week. And listen, I am pumped up about this morning's message, uh, frankly, because a lot of it is not coming from me. Listen, I have been overwhelmed and consumed uh, of, of just thinking about things lately, a pondering. I don't know about you, I don't know where that takes you, but sometimes my mind will take me places that I really don't want to go. And frankly, sometimes maybe shouldn't even go. But the reality is our, our minds are a battlefield. And for some of us, some of you, and I would include myself in this right now, there may be days where we feel despair, we feel hopeless, we feel an overwhelming sense of anxiety. And so to help us work through that this week, I've enlisted the help of a very good friend of mine. Uh, her name is Heather Palacios. Heather is going to be joining us this morning via Zoom, and I get to interview her, ask her some questions. And, and so I, I want you to just lean in, listen to everything she has to say, because she is an amazing woman. Heather Palacios uh, is uh, on staff at Church by the Glades in Coral Springs, Florida. Heather is a speaker, is, is a women's ministry speaker. She speaks at churches around the country regularly. And what she is most passionate about are issues of mental health. Heather has an amazing website, wonderful.com. Uh, she's regularly posting on social media, and she is so encouraging. Listen, for me personally, Heather has been encouraging to me. When I've needed to, to reach out and talk to someone, uh, occasionally, that's, that's Heather. She, she is somebody who, who listens because she's lived it, and she has learned from God, and she has a lot of, of victory to share with us this morning. All right, so without further ado, y'all give it up for Miss Heather Palacios. Hey, everybody! All right, Heather is amazing, but we are both apparently, uh, at least today, like technologically backwards because... <laughs> Uh, I'll have to show a blooper, uh, blooper reel later, but uh, it's been great. So for those of you that don't know, Heather, uh, which most of you won't, but Heather is actually my former boss's wife when I was working in South Florida uh, when, when Stephanie and I were at a church there. And she is amazing. Her husband, uh, Raul, is amazing. About a couple of great boys and a couple of crazy. How many dogs do you have now? How many golden doodles? Oh, let's let's talk about that for a second. Come here, Louie. Come here, Louie. Look, this is my 70-pound golden doodle. Oh, my goodness. He's bigger than you are. Yeah, he's huge. I, call, I, say, I say he's a horse, and I'm going to ride him to church. And then this is the famous Fozzie. There's Fozzie. Yep. Yep. All right. So uh, Heather is a pastor's wife. Heather is also uh, just an amazing woman, first of all, but she's also an amazing woman leader, female leader in that she speaks out uh, on mental health um, just really everywhere. I really think that Heather is at the forefront of speaking to the church and speaking really to society in general when it comes to mental health um, because she has, she has a history there. Uh, but she, I don't know, she's just amazing. There are, I know that you're going to be blessed today. I, just, I called Heather because she's the most positive person that I know. And um, the most, yes, exactly, 24, like what you're seeing right now on screen. Or whoever's never seen Heather before, <laughs> like that's it. Uh, you do just for instance, tell us, give me an example of like announcements that you've done at Church by the Glades, like something crazy that you and, and Fred or, or anybody else has been a part of. Like, okay, describe it to us. I'll have to throw something up on screen whenever I show this live. Okay, well, the one that comes to mind was uh, there's so many but the one that was crazy was two christmases ago when we decided to promote the new series coming up in the new year which was called genius 
So I came out in a complete, authentic, Broadway, theatrical, Einstein, head-to-toe costume. And we also had Galileo, and we also had Socrates. And we had gone to an actual theater costume store just to make sure we were real legit. It wasn't party city costumes in a bag. But I'm not a thespian. So when I went to say my line, I tilted my head back to just put all this passion into it. And my Einstein wig fell off. And all I had on was a (laughs) pantyhose cap. But here's the thing. I didn't know it fell off. And the audience started laughing. And Socrates said, looked at me and he goes, and so, but I couldn't find it. So I was like a cat trying to find my wig. Well, it hooked on my coat in the middle of my back. Of course. Of course it did. Anyway. Hilarious. You know, actually, one of our favorite memories, I don't know if you remember this or not, but we did announcements one weekend on stage together, which that was not my, because I'm not wild and crazy like you are, but I got to bring Campbell with me. Yes. And that was like, I mean, she still occasionally talks about, like, when, when we describe to her, hey, I'm going to be talking to Heather Palacios today. You remember we were on stage doing announcements and she gave you a Barbie doll? Like, amazing day for her. Amazing day for all of us. It was just, it's a lot of fun. You are a lot of fun, Heather. Thank you. And you are hey, encouraging actually, and helpful. Check your inbox. I did send you that picture of Campbell and I from oh, that weekend. perfect. Perfect. Yes. I knew. I mean, I've got, I've got a copy, too. I'll have to throw that up on screen as well. Um. So the reason that I asked Heather to come today is to, to speak to us today is because, you know, we're all like locked up. We're quarantined with COVID-19. And I know from talking with our church members, our staff, myself, my own family, that there's just extra stress and, and pressure right now. And it's especially concerning for those who have any kind of struggles with with mental health issues, with depression, with anxiety, uh, or even addictions, drug and alcohol addiction, that sort of thing. And Heather, I know that you speak passionately about that. So before we jump into all of it, can you like to, I know you have something amazing to share, but can you share with us just a little bit about your story and what brought you to that point where you are so passionately outspoken? Sure. Uh, my story actually started when I was eight years old, and that was during a time where mental health, much less suicide, had any kind of global attention or focus. If anything, it was always brushed under the rug um, and kept in secret. But at eight eight years old, I showed signs of wanting to take my life with, with with a letter I had written. And from that moment till current, Um, There have been, you know, a few attempts to take my life, but the last attempt was probably the most defining moment because it occurred uh, one year into being married to my husband, who is a pastor. And that was in the year 2000, again, where it was pretty unorthodox for a Baptist pastor's wife to try to take her life. And then to really make it weird, the state of Florida locked me up in a psychiatric ward. Uh, But despite all of the lonely roads that I've been on since I was eight, because I've always had a relationship with Jesus Christ, they've never been in vain. Um, First of all, first of all, I've survived and here I am alive, still being able to talk about it. So God gets the glory for that. But two, um, having survived these things and having to go through a lot of them alone, like being eight and wanting to die being a pastor's wife at a psych ward, I know what it's like for the worst of the worst scenarios with your mind. And I like to really encourage people to not give up because I'm still here and God's still on his throne. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, as a pastor's wife, a church member, uh, I know that there are, there are people in our church who are struggling right now and who, and who have been struggling for years. There are people in our community that have struggled for years. And I think especially in church, it, it's difficult to be as open and vulnerable as you are for most people 
And part of that's because of the stigma that uh, still, I mean, I, I think you've done a lot of work at your church to lower that stigma and at other churches and at other, you know, other organizations. Um, but just, it just seems like to me in churches in general, there's still that stigma, right? You got to come, you got to look perfect. I mean, you're wearing your no perfect people allowed shirt. We've got no perfect people allowed. Yes. Everybody will recognize that at our church because, you know, it's tattooed all over our stuff as well. Um, and we try to live that way, but even, even doing that, it still becomes difficult. Right. And people, um, sometimes I think, I don't want to say normal, but you know, sort of your average pew sitter, average church goer doesn't know how to respond, doesn't know how to help. Right. So before we get into what you would say to somebody who's struggling, what would you say just to the church in general about being receptive and inviting people to church or having conversations, praying for somebody, you know, maybe that they know that's struggling. I just, what's something that has been maybe helpful for you or any advice you would give to the church okay. for that? Yeah. You know, I, I've been in this with the church for 21 years now. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what not to do. I'll tell you what not to do. And then I'll tell you one thing to do. Okay. If you're, if you're not the one that is afflicted mentally, and you are part of a church. Here, the one thing I would recommend not doing is to question the faith of that person. Absolutely. I remember distinctly doing a meet and greet after I had spoke at a church. And the person didn't want to have a dialogue with me face to face. So they handed me a letter. I got back to my hotel opened up the letter, I was reading it, and basically just berated me in the letter because if I had more faith, I wouldn't be under the sin of the mental affliction. That wrecked me. <laughs> that wrecked me. But, but I learned from that. And it made me go to God and say, you're going to have to help me stand up for myself without being defensive because I'm not in this to defend myself. Or my faith. I'm in this to encourage. And so God just kind of opened up my eyes to people in the Bible who struggled mentally and their faith was never questioned. You know, here's the thing God let their stories be in the ultimate book of life that is irrefutable and number one bestseller of all times. Absolutely. So, in other words, God made heroes out of these people that struggled mentally. He included them in his book of life. And so I would just say, you know, don't, don't question their faith. Um, if you've got strong faith, then pray for them. Use your strong faith to pray for them. But I wouldn't say, don't, don't question that it's a matter of faith. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, you know, I think that that holds true for so many struggles that people have. Yeah, I'm sure that person that wrote the letter to you felt like you had a lack of faith and, and maybe even in that it, it was sinful because, you know, you maybe you had a, a sinful lack of faith. Right. But you know, so many people, they just struggle with all kinds of things, substance abuse. Uh, they, they struggle with, you know, spending too much money, you know, and, and, and I'm not really trying to equate all those with mental health. But one of the things I know that I try to teach my people is really no perfect people allowed. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we want to love every church in our community. We want to love every person in our community. And we all have different things that, that we deal with. So in our community, I was actually just reading this morning uh, and I wasn't really preparing for this. It, it popped up um, in something that I was reading. But I, I, I came across a resource. It's a community study for our community. So the, the area right around our church. And I was actually surprised to read that our church is in the middle of an area where people have a higher, uh, a higher chance, not just because we're under lockdown, but just in general, a higher likelihood to suffer from uh, substance abuse, uh, uh, sp specifically to um, opioids. Mm -hmm. Right. But in particular, with uh, when it comes to mental health, with um, with anxiety and depression, we have a higher than average rate of anxiety and depression in our area, regardless of what that's a result of. 
So I know like what, what you're saying to us today is going to speak to our community for sure. So for those who, who do struggle, right, they want to do the right thing. I mean, we're talking about moms and dads and husbands and wives and, you know, they, they come to church some weeks they don't, you know, they're, they're just, they're working and they're trying to make ends meet and, and whatever. Uh, but they're still struggling with those things, anxiety, depression, and other issues. So what, you know, we're doing this, uh, uh, some good news series. Share with yeah. us some good news. Cause I know you've got, you've, you've got a lot that you've lived yeah. through and, and you've shared. Yeah. Um, so I have my own ongoing battle with my mind. Um, I don't say I'm a victim. I say I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior on the mental battlefield and I'm fighting my battles. You know, that's kind of how I frame it for myself. But in addition to that, I have a, a huge, huge compassion and heart for addiction, not because of myself, but for the last nine years, um, my little, my youngest brother, I have three brothers. My baby brother has um, battled with drug addiction and is currently his whereabouts are unknown and is, is actually you know, hooked on fentanyl, which is very, 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 uh, it's a Russian roulette taking fentanyl. Um, and so I've just developed a compassion for that addiction and that life. Um, and between the two, you know, I have to go to the Bible with, with you know, good news, speaking of your series, because y'all are going to forget what I say. You know, it's like crazy lady talking, blah, blah, blah. But I do believe that when I deposit the Bible into my story, I am um, giving people something that is irrefutable and is flawless and is unforgettable because it stores itself in the belly of your soul because it's God's living word. So the good news about the addictions with my brother and the ups and downs with that and the my biggest struggle, Pastor Chris, is is suicide. It's just a real strong, palpable temptation in my head still to this day. Um, but between those two, I look to the Bible and I see that Elijah in 1 Kings 19, Jonah in Jonah chapter 4, um, and Moses in Numbers 11 all wanted to die. They had reached a point of despair in their lives where they didn't want to go on anymore. And when you study those three stories, you'll find four things. Number one, they talk to God. Number two, they heard God. Number three, they had God. And number four, they made it. And so that's really what I've been trying to remind myself during this quarantine time, because uh, the number one no-no between conventional wisdom biblical experts, and school book knowledge for someone like myself, the number one piece of counsel is don't isolate. Yes. So what do you do when the federal government mandates that you have to isolate? It's like, God, is this some kind of joke? But Jonah, Elijah, and Moses were all alone when they wanted to give up, but they still had God and Absolutely. they got through it and they got through it. And so I might be alone. I might be isolated, but I still have the company of God. And if God is all I have left, I have everything I need. Absolutely. That is awesome. So to just, what were those four things real quick? Cause I know somebody's out there writing them down. What, what yeah. were the four things that you said? They talked to God. They listened to God, they had God, and they made it. So you're talking about your four things and, um, and, and just those, those men of the Bible who God used in amazing ways, right? What I have seen in you and just like pour out of you when you, when you speak on stage and you blog about this, and, and I'm sure you've got video blogs. I know you do because I've watched them. You put it on Instagram. Like I do screenshots. I mean, in case, in case you're wondering out there, when I'm struggling myself, and I do struggle from time to time too, 
um, with some of the same the same thoughts that that I'm sure are similar thoughts that Heather's had. You've been an encouragement to me, right? So I'll scroll through Instagram or whatever, and I'll I'll see things that you've posted, and I screenshot. And the things that I screenshot all the time are your lists. You know, you've got yeah. lists on your website, which we're gonna you know put up on the screen too. Uh, and when you you know when you speak, you just pour out truth from God's word about things that encourage you, Bible verses and mm-hmm. and promises that God gives us. So yeah. I know I'm putting you on the spot, but can you just drop some of that? awesomeness yeah. on us, like the things that you tell yourself and that you share all the time. Go for it. Well, the first thing I have to share is my life verse because everybody's got a life verse that's normal. But when you're someone like myself, your life verse is literal and life-saving. Um, and so my life verse, it's always hard for me to get through. I get choked up every time, but I'm, I got waterproof mascara on, so it's okay. But my life verse is Psalm 118, 17. And it says, I will not die, but I will live to tell what the Lord has done. And I can't get through it without getting emotional because I'm like, all these times where I have been critically in danger of wanting to give up, I haven't. And God has allowed me to tell that story. And I have made these hospital visits to people who their prognosis looked horrible. They were on life support. Doctors were advising parents to pull the plug, all kinds of things. And I've seen them, some of them make it and come through on the other side and tell their story. And so to see me not give up for good and God let me tell my story and watch somebody else not give up for good and tell their story. Watching that unfold means that the enemy is losing and that the carpenters in heaven are very busy in overtime building a lot more castles and rooms. Absolutely. That is awesome. Thank you, really, for sharing that with us. Uh, you know, your, your amazing life first. There was a verse. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to quote it right, so I'm going to grab my, my Bible. You may be able to quote it. It's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Oh, yeah, I love that one. Can you, can you, do you off the top of your head, can you quote it? Like, well, it's, what's Ray, it's, so I'm opening my Bible. Yeah, so I've done two um, video blogs during this quarantine. It was uh, myself as a bipolar, suicidal person, and my friend Ryan as an addict. And we were like, we got to find a Bible verse to get through this thing. And it's in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, where it's talking about temptation. And it says that he will, all, he being God, will always help you find a way out. Out of what? Out of your bad circumstances? No. Out of your mental turmoil? No. Out of your addiction? No. He will always help you find a way out of the temptation you're having. And that is so promising because it doesn't qualify a certain temptation. So. It doesn't just mean pornography. It doesn't just mean gambling. It means someone like myself who gets tempted to quit and take her life. And it means someone that gets tempted to take another hit from a pipe or a a needle. And it's like, God's like, look, I will get, I will help you find a way out. If you believe in me, we're going to get out of this temptation together. Yes. Yes. It says that God is faithful too. Mm -hmm. So the way, when I teach this verse, um, yeah, I swear sometimes that there's there are things that I just want to have tattooed on me somewhere so that I never forget <laughs> them. But when I teach this verse, I teach it that we serve a never, never, always God. We are never alone. He never gives us too much that we can't handle with him. And he always gives us a way out that right. he's just he's God is amazing that way for all of us. Um, and he is even when we're unfaithful. Right. Right. Or we're tempted to be unfaithful. But even when we are unfaithful. To yep. God, God is so faithful to us all the time. Yep. Um, so tell us, like, what's what's going on right now, sort of in your world, and I don't I don't mean in like at home in quarantine, but just as you're speaking or you're meeting people, are there resources? Are there books? Are there podcasts? Like, is there anything that's been encouraging to you outside of God's word in church? Because I know. 
Like that's, that's where we start. But has there, is there anything else that's been encouraging to you that if somebody's seeking, like, obviously I'm going to send them to your website and your yeah. blog, but other than that, that you would, that's been helpful to you that you would recommend. One thing that has been an amazing discovery and an actual answer to prayer for me is having this influx of people that need someone to talk to that's a professional right now, which is my number one advice anytime I go anywhere is number one, find a, find a counselor. Uh, well, what do you do in quarantine when you can't be six feet near anybody? How do you go to your counselor? And thankfully, because of the laws and the whole um, virtual doctor system, has expanded to include mental doctors as well. And so it has opened up a huge door for me to be able to refer people that have sought me out for needing someone to talk to, to an online counselor that will meet with them online. Gotcha. Awesome. And, yeah. Yeah. So I have that resource. If anybody needs it, they can, you can reach out. It Y'all can reach out to me. I'll give that to you. Um, the other thing is, uh, honestly, Pastor Chris is I am not watching the news and not because I don't want to be in the know and, you know, educated and all that stuff. It's because the news right now treks in the direction of negative and I don't have the bandwidth to bring on more negative. So I decided about a month ago when this all started happening that I would not watch the news and I would just go to my husband or my friend Lisa for things I need to know. And so it's actually from them that I learned about South Florida having a shelter in place and a mandatory wear masks when going out in public. It's, I did not learn that from the news, but that has helped me preserve my mind. Gotcha. Now I know that you're also, you know, social media, like you sort of live there, right? Has, has that been affected too? Like, do you still do the social scroll, you know, or have you limited yourself that way? Or I see, it's funny. I feel like I'm just like this lone ranger. Um, <laughs> my whole life it's like, which kid is doing his own thing? Oh, it's Heather. But um, with social media, I see it as God's property. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Maybe I'm naive and ignorant, but I see social media as God's property that he has allowed me to have an investment in. And if I'm on social media right now, it is to do two things. Can I make someone laugh? Can I make somebody um, be encouraged? Yeah. And so... I know that there's so much bad stuff on social media. I'm not on social media looking for bad stuff. I'm on social media saying, Lord, can I encourage somebody or can I make somebody laugh? And so if I come across a post that they're just like, life stinks, world's going to end, there's no reason to keep, you know, I'll leave them a comment. I don't even know who they are, but I'll just be like, hey, listen, God is still in charge and I hope you know him. I'll pray for you right now. I mean, boom, you just yes. dropped some Jesus onto somebody's post. What are they going to do? Block you? Oh, well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. Your time is precious. I know it is. And I want to thank you for that. What else? Like, Cause I'm, I know I've forgotten something, right? So what's the, what's the question that you wish somebody like me would ask, but that hasn't been asked and you want to answer it? Ooh. Yeah, I know. I just like. Um, you know, just remember that there are people that are struggling mentally that don't show it. They don't show it at church. They don't show it at social media. They don't show it at the church cookout afterwards but deep down inside they're dying. And so I wish that more of us would just text, call, or say face to face, um, Hey, how are you doing during this? Is there anything I can do for you? And wait for them to answer. Gotcha. 
And if they're like, no, everything's great. Be like, that's awesome. So happy for you. Just wanted to check. But it, there'll be, there will be one person who will answer it and shock you. Yeah. And, and when they shock you, also give thanks because God just used you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm so glad that you said that because I, in my second job, you know, my day to day nine to five outside of the church job, I do sales. And so I go business to business and, you know, it's about relationship building and talking with people and that sort of thing. And I can't tell you how many times when I've simply asked the question, how are you doing today? Sometimes the first time I meet somebody, like it's just, it's inside of them dying to get out. They don't know that I'm a pastor that I'm just, I'm this random dude that stops by and asks them how their day was. And I can't tell you how many times like it's come to tears and prayer and just like come to Jesus moments yep. just because I asked. Yes. So that is, that is so true. I, you know, thank you again for sharing that. Just remind, we all, we all need a reminder, right? We all yeah. need a, a reminder. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Um, lung, 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 lung. Yes. We miss you guys so much. You know, one of these days we're going to get back down to South Florida and a little family vacation and, and come back home. I, we love Pastor David and Miss Lisa. We love you guys. Uh, we miss everybody. And, uh, you know, I, I probably shouldn't say this on the Internet, but if you see Zane, tell him hello from Campbell because, you know, Ooh. she still misses Zane. I'm just saying. I'm I think saying. you guys should. I think you should betroth them. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. Hey, I love the Psych family, and I love what you guys are doing up there. And I know your church, if they're a reflection of your family, that you guys are going to take so much turf for heaven. So keep at it. Love you guys. Thank you. Love you, Heather. Absolutely. Wow. Man, I am so blessed by Heather and what she had to share with us this morning. Listen, I'm not going to pretend to know where you are, what you're going through, but what I do know is this, that our minds are a battlefield. And I know what my mind looks like. It's, it's typically like a chessboard. I, I, I approach the world often as a chessboard. Uh, I move my pieces around. I'm very strategic. But what happens when my emotions run high, what happens for me when I'm under stress, uh, when, when I begin to lose hope, when there's despair, when, when my temper flares, is that I lose control. And, and I begin to lose pieces off my chessboard. I begin to lose battles very, very quickly. And I don't know what those battles are that you lose when you begin to lose control, when you, when you allow Satan to, to come in and start taking over your mind, your board, but I know for a lot of people, you, you, you may be right now scrolling through social media because you have extra time and you're at home and that, that begins to play with your mind. You know, you're, you're a mom sitting at home and you got a couple of kids like we do and you scroll through and, and you see just that, what, what seems to be this, this superwoman, Wonder Woman, amazing mom, you know, her kids match and she's taking pictures and she's got some craft that they're doing and, and she's, you know, the homeschool diva. And you start thinking to yourself like, wow, that is amazing. I feel so bad because my kids have not gotten out of their pajamas today. I've not gotten out of my pajamas. My, my kids haven't been out of their pajamas in days. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure if I've seen my kids today, right? And so it, it, it really our minds just start playing, they start playing tricks on us. You know, sometimes you may be the kind of person, male or female, uh, that just... You don't even understand it. You don't know why it happens, but there are just some days that you just feel weepy. It's not like you, you go through the day crying constantly, but there's just this overwhelming sense of sadness. And there's, it's not like somebody's said something to you or done something to you that set you off. There's just some days where you, you don't know what's wrong, but you know that there's something wrong. And so that starts to, to play on your mind. And there may be some of you who, like Heather, and quite honestly, like me, if I'm completely open and vulnerable, where those days, those thoughts, those, those times when 
you know, it seems like Satan has just wiped every piece off of my board and it's just me and the king. I'm a, I'm a little pawn, maybe I'm a knight, you know, and the king is left because he's the king of kings and lord of lords. And there are just some days when I feel like, God, I have lost it all. I might as well just throw in the towel. I might as well just end it all. But on those days when it's just me and the king on the board, all we need is just me and the king to win. See, my, my son has been playing this game lately online. He, he loves playing games online with his friends. And there's this one game in particular where they play as a team. And they're playing against another team. And obviously there's a goal, there's something that they're trying to defend or defeat or whatever. But oftentimes on the team, I walk in and each team member has a different role to play. And he has been playing the role of the healer this week. I don't know if he always plays that, but, but he's been playing the role of the healer. And so his job is when the team begins to lose, when they, when they start losing their energy, right? They're, they're getting shot or whatever it is that, that's happening to them that causes them to lose energy. His job is to go around and, and re, renew them, refill them, uh, give them energy back so that they can continue to fight. And I think sometimes we, we take that job on ourselves. And yes, we can say renewing words to people. We can, we can help people. We can be very encouraging. But the reality is all of that comes from God. All of that comes from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is our great Redeemer and He is our Healer. He's the one who brings peace and understanding and satisfaction to our lives. Listen, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and, po- and proper worship. Listen, for a lot of times, a, a lot of years, I would just sort of stop there and think, okay, I, I've got a, I'm, I'm giving my body as a living sacrifice. I'm not going to sin. I'm going to be faithful to my wife. I'm going to not say hurtful things to my, to my kids. I'm not going to steal or cheat or anything like that. And so, you know, my physical everyday walking around life, my body, the physical things that I do, I'm going to give that to God. And it says that this is true and proper worship. Okay, so that's true. And even though I would read verse 2 that I'm about to read to you, I, I didn't really let it impact me. And today it's impacting me because here's what it says. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. That sounds a lot like verse 1. Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. If I want to offer my body as a living sacrifice, if I don't want to be conformed to the pattern of this world, and listen, nobody wants... Chris without Jesus. Nobody wants a worldly Chris. I I promise you that. If I don't want to be there, then it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, God wants to renew your mind. God, God wants to help you win the battle. And so when it's just you and God on the chessboard and you feel like that's all you've got left, that's all you need is you and God. But what's amazing about God is He begins to renew you. He begins to renew your life. And what's different between you know, playing with God and actually playing chess is that He makes the rules, so He gets to put all the pieces back on the board for you. Listen, God is the kind of God who wants to put your life back together, who wants to give you everything that you need to survive, and not just to survive, but to thrive. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. In the end, Satan will be defeated. Do not let him defeat you today. If you have Jesus as your Savior, you may lose a battle in your mind today, but you will never lose your salvation. This is not a question of your faith. This is a question of your life. This is a question of the quality of life that you're going to have here on earth with yourself, with your family. Let God give you victory today. If you are struggling, call out to Him. 
if 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 there's a if there's a time when you feel like you just don't know where to turn to, you don't know who to talk to, pick up the phone, call me. Send me a message on on Messenger on Facebook if you don't have my phone number. I I will respond as soon as I see that message. Yesterday, I responded to six emails from people who were struggling. Uh, they, they didn't all come in all at one time, but I responded to them all at one time. I carved out part of my day to think about what to say to these six people. And they were all six different issues, but they all boiled down to one thing. They were feeling overwhelming despair because of something going on in their lives. And they were reaching out to somebody. That somebody was me. And so I was able to respond and to, and to pray for them by email. But listen, don't let the, the tragedies, the struggles, the pressures, the, the stress of this world so overwhelm you that you completely turn your back on this world. This world loves you. People in this world love you. Your family loves you. God loves you. He put you here for a purpose. God, God, loved you so much that He sent His one and only Son to die for you. If you have never trusted Jesus as your Savior and you are struggling with, with the battlefield of your mind, you're not on the winning side yet. Jesus wants to save you. Jesus wants to, to redeem you, to buy you back. He has traded Himself in to get your peace back on the board. That's what Jesus did for you. He lived a perfect, sinless life. He gave His life a couple thousand years ago as a sacrifice to die on a cross, but He didn't stay dead. On the third day, He rose again. In that act, what He did for you was something you couldn't do for yourself. The Bible teaches us that we are all sinners, that none of us, none of us are perfect, and that because we're sinners, we need a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. Listen, all healing comes from God, and it starts with Jesus. He, he has made us more than conquerors. We are overcomers. We are warriors who will be victorious. So listen, this morning, wherever you are, if you've never trusted Jesus, make this your prayer. Just, just you know, close your eyes and bow your heads if you want to, or you can look directly at the screen. But what God teaches us is if, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we confess with our mouths, we say with our mouths what's in our hearts, what we actually believe, that Jesus will save us. So prayer is the way that we talk to God. So make this your, your prayer this morning. Just say something like this. There's nothing magic about the words. It's just what we do. Say something like this. Dear Jesus, I love you. Thank you for loving me. I know that I need a Savior, and I need help right now. I confess that I'm a sinner. And I thank you for paying for my sins. Jesus, I love you. I want to make you the Lord of my life. I want to live my life for you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for calling me a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Listen, if you pray that prayer this morning, let somebody know. Leave a comment on Facebook. Leave a comment uh, on, on YouTube, uh, raise your hand and comment on the, on the chat room if you're watching at church online at uh, live.tcaf.com. Let us know. Send me a message. We want to pray for you, and as soon as we get back in our building, uh, you know, we want to we baptize you. We want to talk to you some more about that. Welcome to the family. You have hope, all of you watching right now. We have hope in our Savior. The good news is that it's okay to not be okay, but God loves you way too much to leave you that way. I'm praying for you this week. I pray that you have an amazing rest of the week and that you will be the warrior on the battlefield and that you will come through victorious in the battlefield of the mind. Love you so much. See you soon.